Hello, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining Mother and Refuge of the End Times. We would like to share with you some thoughts from an article published on the Spanish website Forums of the Virgin Mary. How the tremendous moral alteration of the end times is taking place. In several videos and articles, we talk about the fact that we have reached the end of time. That is, a change of era, it is not the end of the world, where we will see the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which will be followed by an era of peace with the re-Christianization of the world. In this new epoch, our Lord is going to make a decisive intervention on earth, given that creation has gone beyond the limits tolerated by the Creator. That intervention involves taking power away from a demon, but the evil one will not go away without a hard battle. Moreover, he will try to step on the accelerator to materialize his project of an earth without God and with a moral opposite to the Christian one. Here we will talk about how the evil one is inverting the morality of the world, why he is doing it in an accelerated way, what we can expect in the coming years, and what we Christians should do. The vision that Pope Leo XIII had at the end of the 19th century warned us of the greater power that the devil would have when he heard a conversation between Jesus and the evil one, where he asked for 100 years of greater power to destroy the church. Our Lord accepted the challenge and said, Very well, if you think that you can do it, then I grant it to you. It is these demons, now more powerful, that are producing this fantastic reversal of morality and the way human beings relate to reality today. This change of era was already prophesied in advance by Malachi's prophecy, where it shows that the last pope of the previous era would be Benedict XVI. Then two or three popes will come who will act in the tribulation, and then the prophecy is called to silence. And the same phenomenon was described by the Virgin Mary to the seer Conchita de Garabandal in the 1960s. Conchita de Garabandal said that at the death of John XXIII that there were only three popes left plus one that did not count, and then the end of times would come. It was she who gave this name to this new era. John XXIII was succeeded by Paul VI, John Paul I, John Paul II, and Benedict XVI. So far, there are the four. Therefore, the end times began with Francis, according to Mary, and there seems to be no doubt that from then on, the problems in the world become more acute and those within the church worsen notoriously. But beyond the prophecies, the reality in which we live shows us that we are entering a tribulation. For example, exorcist Father Chad Ripperger says that exorcists around the world have noted an extraordinary resistance from demons in recent times. Before, the demons could be expelled more quickly. In a day or two, 99% of the demons were out, maybe a week. And today, the average of an exorcism is between 10 months and 2 years, because the demons have acquired a resistance that they never had in the past. Also, as Joseph Ratzinger said, the changes that are taking place in this age make the changes that happened between the Middle Ages and modern times seem insignificant. Everything that is happening is as a consequence of abandoning the belief in God. We no longer live in relativism, as happened in the 20th century, where nothing is true and nothing is a lie, and everything depended on the color of the glass through which one looked, where it was questioned whether something could be classified as good or bad. Now the world is clear that there is good and evil, truth and lies, only that evil is called good and good is called evil. The truth is no longer reported by the media, but lies disguised as truth are reported and those who tell the truth are punished for being liars. Good things such as the defense of life are considered negative for the economy and bad for people, and the opposite is becoming a human right. And the opinion of some people about the non-existence of God has been transformed into that he exists, but that it is necessary to blaspheme him. Before for them, Jesus Christ was not really present in the consecrated host. Now it is admitted that he is but it is legitimate to step on the host to punish Jesus Christ. The evil one is trying to establish the sacrilege and worship of the beast. This is very obvious. Most ordinary people have a feeling that something is wrong with the world. The level of darkness that covers the world is perhaps the deepest that has been seen in the last 2,000 years. The constant that the evil one uses for this inversion of morals are the emotions disconnected from reason. The evil one is subverting the world by turning it upside down through emotion. And it is reasonable for it to be so because it is the great antagonist of the one who has total knowledge of God. He is the monkey of God. 
If you look closely, you can see that all the phenomena that invert reality have a compassionate and emotional movement behind, and a complete lack of rational reflection. Today, emotional glamour is the most effective weapon to manipulate the masses and to paralyze critical reflection. It is the emotions that defend the absurd and condemn the judgment of reason. And this is a consequence of a more serious fact. Father Malachi Martin, who read The Third Secret of Fatima, has said that it contains something horrifying, a great apostasy that will cover the world and also penetrate the church. And God is surely disappearing from the minds and hearts of most people. Today, the goal is to be a good person, but measured by the world's standards and not God's standards. It is about pleasing the world. Today, there is an inability to see sin on God's terms. The conscience has fallen asleep. First, what was previously called sins has been relativized. Then excuses were made to tolerate it. And now, things that were sin yesterday are being reassessed and redefined as good. Even within the church, several high-ranking prelates seem to be redefining the value of life, sexuality, and the value of marriage. And many lay people who publicly define themselves as Catholics and receive the Eucharist hold positions contrary to Catholic doctrine on life, sexuality, and marriage. In an earlier time, the refuge was the Catholic Church, but it is no longer, because too many do not consider it so, and they accuse it of corruption and perversion, especially referring to the abuse crisis. But the Church has also been infected. Before, the Catholic culture was everywhere in the Church. When you talked to a priest or a nun, you knew that they were going to give you profound advice, based on the truth, and that it wouldn't change much if you asked one or the other. But this has vanished, and today there are too many leaders in the church who kneel before the world. Furthermore, the search for social justice has replaced the search for holiness. The fences that were held against mortal sin are giving way, and the recommendations of many of those who should direct the person towards holiness are no longer clear and unequivocal. We enter a world of exceptions, where objective sin no longer exists, giving way to what each one internally understands as sinful opening the door for a religion tailored to each one and not to God's measure, and so the soul becomes lukewarm and lazy. There are fewer and fewer truths, there are more and more exceptions to the rules, and the duties of each state are becoming vague, and then it is reasonable for people to stay away, because there are no clear rules, and everything is just as confusing as it is in the outside world. All this path leads to the spiritual death of a large number of people, and that is why God is going to make a decisive intervention to purify the world in the end times. And what is a Christian to do in these times? Be clear that good exists and that evil is the absence of good. That's why you have to spread the good. Also, be clear that Jesus Christ is with us and that the daily miracle of the Eucharist is what gives meaning to history. And next to him is the Blessed Virgin, calling us and strengthening us in faith. You don't have to look away from them. Remember that God does not lose battles and that this time he will also triumph over evil. Until the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Christians will not be the majority again, but rather the opposition, even in our homes, and that the greatest effort should be put into keeping faith intact in the face of attacks from the world and from the evil one. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Thank you for watching Mother and Refuge of the End Times. Please see our new prayer book, Pieta of the Apocalypse. Follow the link for the details.